necessarily <coughs> to the people that you give stuff to does it have any effect. <laughs> Not necessarily. Mm -hmm. When I was in Corville, church in Corville, I had a crew, and we went every Saturday for a couple of years. Had as many as six or eight people. Mm -hmm. you know, just to give them a simple introduction and invitation to the church, to their door. Would talk to people, witness to people. Once in a while, somebody would even say that sinner's prayer. Probably no effect. <laughs> but Hallelujah. God has a way yes. of rewarding your effort. Hallelujah. Okay? So we get a call this morning from a gal that has been in and out of this church for a long time, different times, and she needs to get to church this morning. Yes. So the effort, it, the person you witness to may not be uh -huh. who comes the, into the fellowship of the church, but God will send someone because you went to work. Man. You get it? Mm -hmm. You see, because the Bible says, Acts 1 8, yes. it says, You shall be my witnesses. Uh -huh. When the Holy Ghost comes up, you shall be filled with shall power, power, and you shall be you. my witnesses. Hey, Jerusalem, so this be hometown, Jerusalem, <laughs> Samaria, that's different, coming up. Then the other most parts of the earth. Somebody's watching this in England. We got a prayer request from England. Amen. 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 And that's what we have to do. Amen. It's up to God what the results are. Yeah. We do our part, he'll do right. his part. Right. And, and you never want to question what he does. <laughs> and I mean, all those years, this over two years that I did that, we managed to get two visitors to come to the church, and one of them I knew from the past. And we would invite hundreds every weekend. Hundreds. 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 I took, I took young people out one time and said, we're going to put out a thousand invitations today, and we did it. Amen. Down the Ped Mall, and I was sitting before the police got us. First of all, I want to stop the work out. Second Peter, I'm going to go to verse 5. And ju I'm just going to read part of verse 5. And besides this, give all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, to knowledge temperance, to temperance patience, and to patient godliness, self-control, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. Brotherly kindness and charity. Christians are supposed to be a charitable people. We have to learn to have some patience and put up with some stuff. Hmm. I wonder what. Was she going to talk about thorns? There they are. This one's on Jesus' head. And, oh, that's the ones. Not, I mean, off that tree. <laughs> Not the, but brotherly kindness. We see, and I see this in, in a lot of churches. You got, and some, somebody talked to me not very long ago, might be sitting here this morning, about some people that are going to church. They're going to the uppity church. Going up there where everybody is pretty and everybody smells perfect and everybody's got a nice suit and everybody looking really good, amen. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't look as best as you can look for the Lord. You, you're supposed to be as good as you can get. You're not supposed to look like something the dog drug in. But if you ain't got, you got what you got, and you are what you are, and your finances are what they are, amen, that the best you can do is find something at the goodwill, you get it at the goodwill, amen? Where'd this shirt come from? No, they come from the crowded closet from the mission. But anyway, we're supposed to treat people right. We're not supposed to. We're supposed to have charity. Somebody has a need, we're supposed to try and meet it. Somebody, <coughs> somebody's down and out, try and lift them up. Somebody's in trouble, you try and give them a hand. Somebody needs a ride to church, you give them a ride to church. Amen? Amen. <sighs> brotherly kindness. And to kindness, brotherly kindness, charity. Charity, that's love, the word for, the, to love one another. To, to overlook some other's faults. We all have faults. We ain't none of us perfect. Amen. 
My wife reminds me that daily, that I am not perfect. Although I think I am, I am not perfect. I have some problems once in a while. I'm not perfect. I might get a little mean once in a while. Hallelujah. Anybody else in here ever get mean? Huh? Just mean her in a rattlesnake now and then. Certain things just rub me about so long, and I start getting a little mean. I have to go to Jesus to get rid of the meanness, amen? Because I'm supposed to put on the mind of Christ. I'm not supposed to be working in my mind, but in his mind, amen? 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 amen. Sometimes you can be tested. Brother Doug, <laughs> you're tested. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Right. And if these things be in you and abound, they may make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. You're not supposed to be barren and unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us to study to show thyself approved. That is, that is what I see in the majority of what call themselves Christians. Even in the majority of them that have virtually the same doctrine that we have. I see what I call Christian light. The people don't know nothing. Oh, they come in and they sing and they shout a little bit, and you can't beat this place for singing and shouting. This is the singingest and shoutingest place you ever want to get. You tell them. You're going to preach from the second book of Hezekiah, and they'll spend all morning trying to find it. Amen. <laughs> they don't open that thing unless the preacher opens that thing. They don't come to Bible. This, this, this is a fantastic group. Yeah, I'm, I'm complimenting you people here. We got almost everybody, and there's a couple because of circumstances in their lives that they can't, but almost everybody is here on Wednesdays and, and, and on Sunday mornings for, for Bible study. So that you might study yourself to show yourself approved, that you might know something about God. Amen. The people that are what I call Christian light, that do not have the fruit of God, are what I call, and they're wandering around out there, the world is full of them right now. I call them chrismaniacs. They're chrismaniacs. They don't know the Word of God very well at all. But God speaks to them every four minutes. They have revelations, amen? And they go off and, 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 and do crazy stuff. Just crazy stuff. Tell them that God did it. No, no not like walking across the field. That was God. But, <laughs> but they do crazy stuff. I knew a charismaniac who had a farm, who was always talking to God. Going to make your fortune in the goat business. Had revivals in her barn. I even preached there. Had no money. Couldn't make the payments. I think she ate all the goats. Had a wood stove. Now listen to this. God told me that he'll supply the wood. Now, I mean to tell you, it just like in the neighbor's yard, there was just trees laying everywhere right there, just dead trees ready to be cut up and burned. So the Lord already supplied the wood. And I knew a guy that got to feeling poorly for her who went down there and said, I'll help you cut up the wood so you'll have wood for the winter. She says, no, God said he'll supply the wood. He didn't say I had to help cut it. Dang near froze to death, she did. <laughs> and rightfully so. <laughs> God supplies. God, he, they don't say God helps them to help themselves. You know, yeah, God spoke to you. Two thirds right, one third wrong. Got to get out and get it. It's right there. Amen. Amen. Go forth, do something for God. If you need something, you go get it. Yeah, he says he'll prosper you, but he don't say the money just going to fall from heaven. You might have to get a job, heaven forbid. Amen? Amen? Or go in business. And then support the work of God. I've watched a family in this church who, they couldn't be here this morning because 
Her mother fell through her trailer floor. Uh -oh. And they had to go fix the trailer. I watch this family. And I'm not a big time prosperity preacher. Don't get you will, but you will prosper. Because you don't get out of balance. They've been taken from the worst trailer court in the world. Old junk vehicles. A new car, got their own home. Because they've been faithful to God. Right. They tithe. Not just on what generally comes. They, as it says that Jesus said to the Pharisees, you tithe on the mint, and that's right to do. They'll tithe on any little. I knew a guy that was so strong to understand tithing, to get blessed, that when he took in pop cans, which he'd already tithed on the money, right. you know, but he'd bring in a handful of change from the pop cans, 10%, whatever he got for his pop cans. Amen? It's a tithe on the mint. That means as you grow a garden, you're supposed to tithe on the tomatoes. Pastor's sitting right here. <laughs> Just waiting to eat them. Amen. Amen. I'm, <sighs> Amen. That's, and when you do what God says to do, he will bless you. Open up the floodgates of heaven. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. And, and don't, no, it don't make no sense to give 10% to God and, and figure that you're going to have more when you get done, but you always do. I've been in this place for a little while. We're on our 16th year. I've watched people that came into church and got with the, the given program like they're supposed to, and I watch them prosper. And I watched other people that was poor. Oh, here we go. I never be said, boy, you're just talking about money. What are we going to talk about money right now? And, and it ain't that we, ain't that the church is in trouble. Don't get me wrong. I'm not preaching this for you. We had money just to overhaul the front end of the church. Don't worry. I'm not preaching it to bring money into the house. I'm preaching it so you might get blessed. Right. Yeah. Amen. That you might get blessed. Because you can't be blessed when you're cursed. Right. It says you're cursed with a curse. Yeah. Right. I watch people. Wouldn't get with it. I'll tell you what. It absolutely and everybody, anybody can get mad at me right now. They want. You don't get right with the money. You ain't right with God. Amen. You'll backslide and go out the back door. Right. Happens every time. Right. Enough said on that. I just, I didn't know I was going to do that. Fruit. And the knowledge. And if you don't get into the word of God and learn what this says, the fruitfulness, you're not going to get anywhere with God either. You've got to study the word. You've got to take this thing and digest it. It is the, blah, the bread from heaven. There are so many people, and I mean to tell you, we had a worship service this morning. Holy Lord, and I love a worship service. Don't get me wrong. But there are people that live on worship. They love to jump and shout, and they don't know nothing about God, and they get nowhere with God. It's just like Saul when the evil spirit was on him and David would play the harp for him, he'd feel better. But as soon as the music stopped, he'd start throwing spears at David. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> what is he throwing? Spears at the man of God. He that lacketh these things is blind, can not see afar off, has forgotten that he was purged from his old sins, that is, cleansed. He forgotten that he had come to Christ and repented of his sins, been baptized in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus. His sins had been remitted, and he's now turned back to be in the same way he was. Because the fruit's not showing. How many do we know like that? I, I will say this. I've seen this in the church here. I've seen people... That once they make that commitment, once because the, that baptismal ceremony is just like a wedding ceremony, that, that it, it's a commitment that you're saying, I love you, Jesus. You're signing the contract with him. Amen. And I will say this, that I have seen in many cases that once somebody makes that commitment, and even if they don't keep it, and if they're not right, God will not let go of them. He's like a hound dog from heaven, keeps tracking them down until they turn their life right. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. that, you know what I do for those people? Oh, Lord. 
I do a wonderful thing for them. I pray that whenever they go to sleep, they see hell. If any of you ever had a vision of hell in the night, you know your pastor praying. If you're starting to backslide, because that's what I do. I say, because I found out, oh, please, Lord, bring him back. I found out, call him on the phone saying, come on back to church now. But I found that over, but you pray for them to get a vision of hell. And by golly, they'll come running in the door. Hallelujah. They've got to understand that they made a commitment to God. And if they don't keep it, Amen. Hallelujah. and they divorce God. That's it. Hallelujah. People say I'm mean. <laughs> Purge from his old sins. Whether they neither, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. Make sure that your calling and election is sure. Nobody comes to Christ unless Jesus has called them. Unless the Holy Spirit has went out and put his hook in your jaw. You don't walk in the door of this church by accident. Amen. Amen. It don't happen. I just think I'll go down and visit that little red church. Got red front now. Burgundy fronted church with the new wheelchair ramp in Oxford. I think I'll go visit that thing and see what's it. That, that ain't how it works. God is drawing people in that he's going to put a hook in their jaw and draw them in, that they might get in the place where they might get fed, that they might not falter, they might not fail, that the gifts of the Spirit and the, and, and the fruits of the Spirit might operate through them, that their life might be fulfilled, and they might receive eternal life. Amen. Amen. Yeah, we have some great times here at this church, but this is not a social club. The men's meeting's a lot of fun, but it's an outreach, amen? amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Trying to tr get somebody some knowledge of Jesus and, and get them to know that we are the, the impression of people in the church is by those out there on the street. And boy, we was out and seen them yesterday. Is it, and, and maybe we should do this next time we go. I got a sewing machine if I get some cloth. Make us some white robes and buy us all a pair of sandals. And the, the, the people that think that the Christians are walking around in white robes and sandals and, and that, you know, when you, when you actually get saved that you're just, you're just so pure that it, well, you know, we ain't going to get that white robe just yet. Right. Amen. But, but that's the way they think. And they think if I go to Christ and if I come to Jesus, I'm going to have to put on that white robe and sandals and walk around and I just can't have no more fun in my life. Life is just going to be one big boring set of rules and regulations. But that's not the way it is. The truth of it is, me and Linda talked about this yesterday. I never regretted a day I spent with Jesus, but I regretted the time that I wasted before I came. I regret not doing I had oh I had a lot of fun in the world. Sin is fun for a season. But I regret not doing what God called me to do for those 20 years. I I studied the book for those 20 years. I read through the Bible so many times, make your head spin trying to look for a loophole. I was a loophole hunter. I was trying to find a way to get to God without giving up my own will in life. I didn't want to go to Romans 9, 2, where I was died in Jesus Christ. I wanted to live in Jesus Christ and be justified to God by my own goodness. And I was no good. I don't care how good you are. Your goodness is like filthy rags. You know, Ray wouldn't say it. I'll say it. Menstrual claws. That's what said when Jeremiah, they're going to lift him out of the pit with filthy rags when they hear his righteousness, they said it was menstrual claws. Amen. Oh, boy. <laughs> For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua Messiah, Jesus the Christ. You stick with it. 
You do what you're supposed to do. You're going to enter into an everlasting kingdom. You're going to have eternal life in Jesus. You're going to rule and reign with him right here on this earth. Amen. A lot of you have been misled, thinking you're going to go to heaven. Well, you do. Your spirit goes to heaven, and you hang out there until something good happens. Heaven's just a holdout. It's just a place to rest a little while until the resurrection. When the bodies come out of them, oh, Jesus, we're getting up toward that season when he resurrects. When like Jesus, your body will resurrect from the grave and your spirit will be reunited with your body and you will be set in a position with Jesus Christ to rule and reign with him on this earth for a thousand years. Some will rule over a few, some over many. But you get that entrance. Well, oh, so many people tell me, oh, I don't know. Oh, Pastor Holland, oh, I don't know. if I can just get in the gate, I, I don't care what I get when I get there, just so I don't go to hell. Well, that's okay. But when I come in the gate, Ah, when I walk up to Jesus, I want to have a crown that's filled with jewels by the souls that have been saved across the around the world by my speaking forth the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I want to have a reward that I can't hardly hold. Yes, Amen. Hey. I want to have a reward. We're back to the money. I want to have a reward in heaven for all the glory that's given I gave to God. Hallelujah. With money and time and effort and streets. Oh, did I want to go yesterday? I didn't want to go any more than the man the moon. But once I got going, we was in, we went in the folding mode before we went. We folded as long as we could. But when the 1,000 invitation was folded, we had to take them out. Amen. <laughs> I wasn't going to stop folding race at all. Let's fold a few more. <laughs> Hallelujah. And the folding had to be done, but so did the delivery. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. But you see, in the kingdom, in the kingdom, there are going to be rewards when you make that entrance into the kingdom. Okay? Some are going to be rewarded tenfold, some 20, some 30. Sometimes a hundredfold. Some people. You, you see, you, you think too, I'm picking on you. You think too, you're thinking too spiritual. There are going to be flesh and blood people on this earth. Some that come through the tribulation. Right. Children that never reached an accountability with God, raised up to see if they're going to go God's way. I'll explain all that to you someday. If every little child that was killed in the womb went straight to live in heaven forever, abortion would be a blessing. But it's a curse. Infanticide is a curse. God's going to give them a chance to receive Jesus Christ also. He's going to give them a chance to repent and be baptized in Jesus' name, receive his power during that millennial reign. And then there are going to be the people that survive through the horror that comes upon the earth. And they're going to have to be we get this incorruptible body that doesn't rot, the knees don't hurt, your back don't hurt. And there's going to be jobs to do in the kingdom. Some people are going to have to preach. Somebody's got to preach to those flesh and blood people. Some are going to have to be priests and kings. But somebody's going to have to drive the garbage truck. Amen. 
The king. Somebody gonna have to trim the trees. There's still tree trimming to do. I don't want to have to trim trees and cut wood. I want to have a great prize when I get there. I'm not. I'm, my wife has a problem. She limits God. She says she just wants to be mayor of Oxford. I, I say I want bigger than Oxford. She says, I want to be mayor of Oxford. Any of those people who survived the tribulation in Oxford, I want to rule with a rod of iron over them devils. <laughs> I said, at least give me the county. Hallelujah. This is your opportunity. If you have not accepted Christ into your life, you in this world you serve either the devil or you serve God. There is no in-between. If you're not serving God, you are serving the devil. Receive Christ into your life. Repent of your sins. Turn away from your sins. Pray with me right now. Heavenly Father, I need you in my life. I ask you to come into my life and be the Lord of my life. I repent of my sins, and I want you in my life forevermore in Jesus name Amen In addition to our postal address Anchored in Faith Gospel Church has several electronic means to connect with you Find our TV episodes at youtube.com slash anchored in faith Visit our website at anchoredinfaith.org our phone number, which is area code 319-828-4815. Our email is tv at anchoredinfaith.org. And find us on Facebook by typing at AIFGC into the Facebook search box. We are actually a small church. If you call our 828-4815 phone number, Leave a short message and make sure to include your phone number so we can call you back since we do not have caller ID. Full sermons are available anytime at www.anchoredinfaith.org. Contact us by calling 319-828-4815 or write us at Anchored in Faith, PO Box 204, Oxford, Iowa, 52322 or email us at tv at anchoredinfaith.org This has been a copyrighted presentation of Anchored in Faith Gospel Church, Oxford, Iowa.